tuning in to the online broadcast network, AfterBuzz TV. Over 20 million weekly downloads in over 150 countries and your number one source for after show entertainment. Oh, AfterBuzz TV. After Buzz TV. Destination for TV superfans, producing after shows for over 300 of your favorite TV shows, interviewing celebrities and showrunners, and bringing you behind the scenes exclusives. All thanks to E Entertainment's Maria Menunos, producer Kevin Undergaro, and internet leader Akamai. Now, let the buzz begin. Oh, hello there, internet, and welcome to After Buzzers to another Archer After show. If you haven't already done so, please subscribe to our channel at youtube.com slash afterbuzz or you can check us out on iTunes slash afterbuzz TV. After Buzz TV. It's those URLs. They always get you. <laughs> Don't forget to leave a comment, thoughts, opinions, what we're doing right, what we're doing wrong. And you can always tweet us by using hashtag AfterBuzz Archer, or you can just have ABTV Archer A is the hashtag. ABTV Archer. That also works. Uh, we love interacting with you guys. We love hearing from you guys. We love talking with you guys. So uh, send us some love. We'll try to f uh, send you some love. You can find me on Twitter at Greg Goodness, and I am along here with my host Zach Wilson. And you can find him on Twitter at that Zach Wilson. All right. So there we go. We got that out of the way. We have talked about who we are. Now you know. Now we just need to discuss <laughs> Archer. The topic at hand, Season 6, Episode 3. The title of this one, The Archer Sanction, which I'm not exactly sure what that is a reference to. I would have to imagine some sort of snow climbing, etc. It doesn't yeah, really... Yeah, because there's no sanctioning. Yeah. In this episode. I have to imagine some sort of an, a reference that we are not getting because we usually are pretty good about those things, but maybe not. Something slipped through the cracks here. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways, let's talk about the mission. Let's get on <laughs> board, right? Really straightforward. We're going to assassinate someone. But what I loved about this, and this is a continuation of something that we've seen all season, very simple, very classic spy line, something just a little bit different. We don't know who the target is. Yeah, I like that. It's a great, it's a great setup to like arrive at an assassination, not knowing who to kill. Oh no, yeah. It, for me, <laughs> it's like it's a perfect sort of Archer twist, right? Because now we've gone. We've been talking about this a lot lately, but. Season 5, Archer Vice, right? We go off the rails. We are literally off the train <laughs> rails, right? In some cases, where they're running cocaine across the country. You honey son of a... I know. That's what I do. But we've been <laughs> doing these crazy storylines, and this is just boiled down to its essence. And we get to see a snow location again, which was kind of cool. We are returning to, this time, Germany, correct? Yeah. We were at... The mountain was... Uh, Ditot... Di Schlips, which means that That's one wrote down. Yeah, Daytona Schlips. That sounds about right. <laughs> it means that at least one in seven people are going to die on this mountain. Not Zipic quite of death. Yeah. Oh, how chilling was that German guy's <laughs> accent the entire time? It's like, Whoa. Oh, they picked like the scariest of the foreign people. That's okay. <laughs> hold on. You need to qualify that. <laughs> that's horrifying. Although they were all Axis members, so yeah. we might as well. Well, I mean, like they picked like of a ger of all the different German like types of people you could have picked. This is the scary one. Okay, that's true. If it, it was some guy. In Leader hose, they would like, and he has like a sausage and a pitcher of beer in hand. I would be like, well, that's probably not the guy. Yeah, probably not. Here's what I thought that was interesting though is, and maybe this is a little bit of a negative Nancy coming through, but those people were so inherently <coughs> evil right off the bat that I was like, it's gotta be. Oh, the it's gotta be Mr. Uh, uh, oh, Crash. It's gotta Mr. be Crash. McCarran? Yeah. yeah. No, I mean, for, uh, Leah said he opened the door and he was like <laughs> friendly. I'm like, that. That's the guy. There's always this weird sort of thing that they've fallen into on Archer, where it's the hot person, the hottest person, is the one that they need to kill. <laughs> what happened to the days of Scorpio, where it was just this like overweight, hairy guy that just happened oh, yeah. to have a lot of. 
money. Yeah, well, we had the uh, the the Mexico episode where the the coyote that was, Archer was very attracted to. Right. Um, they, wow, there's lots. Of, yeah, there's a lot of uh, Katya, a um, lot of attractive people that have to die. <laughs> 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 yeah. Although, I mean, I guess the the German and the Japanese woman, and what was the final country that I'm completely missing here? It was part of the Axis. It was Italy. Okay, it was Italy. They were all the most, yeah, the most sinister versions of that, which yeah. is kind of cool. Um, but, yeah, I really like that mountain setting and that snow setting that we haven't seen, I think, since uh, Swiss Miss, the episode where he was... Protecting. Yeah, well, actually, well, that, was, that was season two. Yeah, did Swiss Mitt, was it? No, because we went up to the uh, the mountain where the episode with his uh, his old friend that he thought right. that die that was gay for him. Yeah, the one that caused a little bit of controversy because supposedly it was like, oh, uh, so you're saying that all gay people are? It, we talked about it at length at the episode, but it was very weird. Um, what I did like seeing in this episode was like the Ray and Lana dynamic. That they have. Oh, yeah. Going that, like, on. I mean, that's the. F I it's the fun that you can have when there's like when you have like a, a, a hypersexual guy like Ray mm -hmm. who, and Lana who's just like hello Mr. Crash McCarran yes exactly <laughs> I thought that Ray was being he was not being subtle actually now that I think about it it's like no Ray was being pretty direct and just getting shot down every single time he straight up took off his shirt and was like I have some ideas <laughs> yeah I have some <laughs> ideas on that which is a pretty good callback, actually, now that I'm thinking about it. But, uh, just a weird offshoot. I know that the belts around the neck was supposed to be a clear indication of foul play, but <laughs> my first instinct was, like, autoerotic asphyxiation? <laughs> was that... I... I don't think that there is... Is there a dual, like, a team-up autoerotic asphyxiation thing? I think you I'm... might have just invented it. <laughs> I don't want to be credited with that. Everyone, sue Zach Wilson. <laughs> if you die during autoerotic asphyxiation, it's Zach's fault. Only if there's two people <laughs> and they're in the snow naked. In a tent, right. Uh, what I like, though, is because this episode, we now are dealing with Lana as a mom, right? And we're dealing with her kind of checking in on baby AJ constantly and yeah. seeing what's what. But we really haven't addressed the issue of Lana's, I don't want to say marital status. I don't want to say, I guess where she is in terms of like looking for love, right? Because she has a baby now. She's a mom. It's Archer's baby. Yeah, which is this weird like... Archer kind of like wants responsibilities, but doesn't at the same time. And that's Archer. Why are we gonna talk about it? Yeah, that's, that's fair. Uh, like, no, don't talk about. Actually, wait. Yes, how is it, AJ? Yeah. <laughs> He's like, oh wait, I'm supposed to be responsible. I'm for supposed it. to be caring for this <laughs> living thing. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, though he doesn't care much about Seamus, which you've already talked about at length in prior <laughs> podcasts. But no, it's interesting to see that because Lana was obviously very interested, and Archer was kind of giving her a little bit of gruff for it, a little well, bit of grief Archer for it. Well, Archer clearly wants to be with Lana, or like... Does he, though? Or Okay. He doesn't want Lana to be with anyone else. There we go. There's a key, and there's a key difference there. Mm -hmm. So what are we going to be doing with Lana moving forward? Is it Archer's going to be like, oh well, yeah, you got to go off and you got to do your own thing, or is he going to? Lana and Archer to me is like a more destructive version of like <laughs> Fry and Leela from Futurama. Oh, they spent okay. the whole series back and forth, back and forth. We're in love. We're so perfect for each other. Next episode, we're not really dating, are we? Yeah. Uh, like, and it was always in that weird zone where clearly these two should be together. Mm -hmm. But, like, for series purposes, we can't. <laughs> um, so I think until the show ends, they won't, like, or maybe, like, for a season, they'll be, like, a thing. And then they'll right. break up again. And then, like, by when the show ends, they'll be together with AJ as, mm -hmm. like, this four-year-old child or whatever, depending on how we mess around with time. Right. It's weird because it's only in the most dire of situations do they become a couple. It's when <laughs> Ar it's when Archer has cancer or it's when Lana thinks that she's going to die. Like, these are all situations where you kind of get that moment where they're like, oh, 
oh, they're together. And then as soon as they're out of the life-threatening danger, yep. the danger zone, as soon as they're out of the danger zone, hey then they go back to being like, oh, yeah, whatever, this person, this person, I don't care. Because Lana acts in the same way. I mean, we didn't see it in this episode because there was no one for Archer to really hit on. But she's also just been like, oh, those women that you keep, which is sort of a <laughs> weird dynamic to have for the father of your child. Though maybe not. I don't know. Family practice is all new to me. I mean, she picked him. That's true. Like, more so than... In a lot of ways, a lot of people. <laughs> like, she's like... Very deliberately. I am deliberately going to take your... Uh, your sperm, seed, yeah. Your seed and uh, <laughs> combine it with mine and make a baby. Okay. Yeah, I can see that moving forward. In this this wasn't that's... like they got drunk and hooked up one night. No, she made a conscious decision to give it Archer genes. Yeah, that's true. It'll be interesting to see where it moves forward from here. I, You know, I, I kind of want the baby to, like, fall into a time machine and be like 25 years old because I want to see what like a young woman version of Archer is. Oh god. <laughs> Disastrous. <laughs> a horrible, horrible thing. Um, before we get off the topic of Ray and Lana though, I do just have to say I loved referring to Ray as the DMZ demilitarized zone. <laughs> that he is just <laughs> in the equation where no one is interested in each other it's just that he is the demilitarized zone he is the buffer of non-sexuality you know that works out if you think about it yeah there's no, no the, if uh archer and lon are not touching each other there is no hanky panky yeah nobody's turned on right did we ever establish if ray would ever even consider sleeping with archer um first season Right. Um, when Lana is uh, fake whoring herself out, she's like, hey, if you want to bang Lana Kane, take a number. <laughs> and Ray has a number, and it's like, I thought you were gay. Nobody's that gay. <laughs> so. <laughs> I forget about that. Yeah. So the answer is yes, Ray would have sex with Lana. Well, I was asking if he would have sex with Archer, if we've oh, ever established I that. I totally missed what you were saying. Yeah. But. I don't know. I, so I, I don't think we've heard a no. Okay. I would be interested to see where that goes. Because, like, <laughs> I honestly, like, it seems like they kind of have a thing going on. If, like, nothing else, you're just like, I want to see it. Like, I want to see that happen. I want to see that trajectory unfold. Just to see if Ray is able to totally distance himself from it or if Archer tries to deny it ever happened. I think Archer would just do it out of spite. Like, just to make Ray feel uncomfortable <laughs> afterwards. But that's my own. I mean, Archer has has been has been what Come uh, on. well I'm gonna let you fill in the blanks let's just say Archer has is not pure uh, in that sense all right well they did sleep with Scorpio so he oh, is... well, there was that mm -hmm. I, I well <laughs> He does not have his rectal integrity that, to steal a phrase. That is, ooh, that is a horrible <laughs> phrase. Where are you stealing that from? Television. That is, I don't like wherever you got that from. <laughs> For a whole lot of political and personal reasons, I do not like that. Television taught it to me. Oh. You guys. No, it was... Um, Technically, he was raped. Um, that's right. That's what the ep that's what the controversy was about in that episode. Yeah. Now I'm remembering all the way back to when his best friend came in the town. Uh, I didn't want to bring like bring it up in that sense, but it's true. Like when yeah. you break it down. Right. Man, this episode took a real dark turn. <laughs> we had a real light and fun episode <laughs> with lots of drinking and peppermint yeah. schnapps. Can I just say, I wrote down that recipe. Oh, did you? That you want to try it? I, I don't know. Hot cocoa. Mm -hmm. Creme de coca, creme de cacao, creme de menthe, and peppermint schnapps. That's tasty. That's, that's a tasty beverage. Yeah, because you're drinking like a gallon of sugar. I mean, these are the people that came up with uh, green Russians, so I, <laughs> I guess it makes sense. But Archer was on a real sugary drink kick in this episode. He had the fruit bowl, little uh, shark swimming yeah, around. What was that? Oh, that's like some sort of mai tai, clearly. 
some sort of weird exotic drink in that sense. But normally I always figured Archer for a straight oh, bourbon, I just meant man. what was the shark doing in there? Because it's tropical and fun. You've never had a fun drink in your life? I've never had a toy floating in my drink. <laughs> then you have not lived, good sir. That's but an only real drink. The umbrella goes on the rim, not in the drink. Oh, pshaw, I say. <laughs> pshaw. Well, that, you know how I feel about that, but you know what I want to know how people feel about smoothest transition to date? <laughs> I want to know how everyone out there feels about us. And so I would encourage anyone who's listening right now, first off, subscribe. You can either uh, subscribe to the YouTube channel, you can go on iTunes and you su can subscribe to us. Uh, but really, really what we're after, folks, is those sweet, sweet thoughts of yours. We want to get inside <laughs> your brain and tinker around in there. So so leave a comment, leave a rating, let us know what you think. Uh, we try to get back to you when we can. Uh, and you guys, um, we think that we're nerds. We think that we're great at like dissecting the Archer minutia and pulling up references. But you guys on the comments page on YouTube, killing it like beyond killing it yeah we, we can only do so much before we get a chance before we come right into the studio and we need your guys help to help us find those things that we have missed yo d22 queen on youtube actually gave a breakdown of family law. Like, we were talking, oh, well, would Archer have legal claim over his baby? She's saying, yes, Archer does have a legal right to raise AJ because he never signed his rights away when Lana took his stuff. So he is still vis-a-vis -vis a parent. This is, now I'm summing up, but he's still vis-a-vis -a, -vis a parent, and it would, by default, go to him, as opposed to if he had That's signed it away. Yeah. Yeah. And, oh, man, we got so much other good stuff. Joe Joseph Boza entering uh, that same sentiment. Candace Williams chiming in, just saying that I don't feel like she would want her parents to keep uh, <laughs> the baby. So it's like, oh, man. Um, and Captain Awesome, 314, offering up this. Slight correction. We're frequently wrong on the show. Archer didn't get discovered because the guard recognized him. The guard uh, went to draw his weaponry. A little bit of a typo there. When he realized Archer's fake identity was Lando Calvarciano. Yeah, we didn't get a chance, and I was mad about it afterwards to go into the awesomeness that was Lando Calvarciano as a cover name. <laughs> uh, more Star Wars references this week. Yeah. Uh, if, like it was just one really quick one, right? When they're in the hot tub, mm -hmm. and the Kr what Krieger was trying to find, was oh yeah, the, the, the little eye pops up, and it's like the it's the, the swamp thing, yeah, yeah. It's the yeah, it's from Star Wars. Yeah, no, I get you. I hey man, I didn't mean to steal your thunder by claiming it was the swamp thing. No, but it, it was. was just fun. Yeah, I no, I it. loved it. Speaking about that swamp thing, I really liked the B story in this with everyone back at the office. Oh, yeah. Because not only did we get to see the secret sauna room again and see how, like, that comes into play for Cheryl slash Carol's <laughs> birthday, <laughs> them just getting wasted on watermelon what-have-yous, um, but then we also got to go into Mallory's apartment, which we haven't seen in forever, I feel like, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, because I thought Ron took it. Yeah, they did reference Ron in the open marriage, which I always thought was, like, a little bit weird. It's and interesting to have that solidified now, that, like, oh, yeah, they were totally seeing other people. But so, like, were they implying that Cheryl and Pam hooked up with Mrs. Archer? Yeah, that was a thing. That was the thing. I know for a fact that Pam, uh, well, maybe not for a fact, but if I'm memory serves me correctly, I know that Pam ended up naked in a hot tub with Mallory after drinking a whole bunch of green Russians. Yeah, she was. Well, she was in bed with Mallory and that um, the investor. Yeah, the guy from Swiss. Yeah, Mass. but not like in, in her in Mallory's apartment is what I'm saying. Oh, that seemed to be the implication. So you, we had never seen them in the apartment. Yeah, that's fair. The last time I remember being in Mallory's apartment, actually, was during the Italian Prime Minister episode, the classic. We had to have been there since then, because that was a long time ago. Yeah, I know, but that's the one that immediately springs to mind. We yeah. had the dinner party, we but had the Italian Prime Minister. We a lot of time there. Yeah. 
You know what is interesting, though, in this episode is they had a whole bunch of just, like, empty shots, and I don't know if that was intentional, um, where it's like in, we're in Mallory's living room and we're just hearing people yell stuff from all the <laughs> surrounding rooms, but we also did it in uh, at the very end because uh, there was, like, the tent and the white, like, snow over, and so Archer and everybody else were just crying out, and this is this, this vast, empty screen, and all you can hear is the voices. Which, fun fact, everybody, if you're into that, that has its roots all the way back in C-Lab 2021, where Adam Reed did an episode that was just one screen. It was just an exterior shot of C-Lab 2021, and every once in a while an air bubble would pop up, but it was just <laughs> the crew yelling to one another from the different pods. So he did that for 15 minutes. So if you thought that was weird and kind of funny in this episode, <laughs> go back and watch that episode of C-Lab 2021, because I think it's a power outage, is I think in the name of the episode. Interesting little trivia to go yeah. back on here. Yeah, uh, but I, I enjoyed the little like the side plot line, like the the B story here of mm -hmm. uh, Krieger's ringtone, Teutonic butts. That oh yeah, <laughs> such a classic callback. Uh, Used to be mulatto butts. Now it's the Sonic butt. <laughs> white on white butts. <laughs> uh, what else was going on in there? Uh, I liked when the, like Cheryl passed out and they're like Pam. He's <laughs> like what? I was talking about the snacks, you dickholes. Right. Although... Alluding back to, again, sort of the show's light treatment of uh, what have you for... <laughs> I guess you can just say it. She had sex with Cyril while he was passed out on the toilet way back when Archer was having his recovery party. Uh, Pam did? Yeah. No, she, uh, like, that was a joke, is that everyone had sex with Cyril at that party. Ray had sex with Cyril at that party, if I'm remembering correctly. This you is a dark rabbit hole. Yeah, it's a dark rabbit hole do that we don't have time to go down. Do we have time to talk about Conan? We do have a brief moment to talk about Conan. Uh, everyone, if you haven't checked it out yet, there is a Conan uh, crossover with yeah, Archer. It's just like a, basically it. Archer was going to appear on Conan. Right. And so Conan left the studio, got involved, and then they animated Conan into an Archer like scene. It's amazing. If you if you're listening to this now, just go just stop what you're doing and go li watch it. It's five minutes long. It's on YouTube. It's amazing. Absolutely great. And real quick before we get out there, Zach, go ahead and predict something. Oh, Barry is going to lose his cyborg skills when we see him next week. Ooh, I like that. I think that calling way back later, Barry is going to kidnap the kid at some point. Oh, no. Yeah. Yeah, yeah probably. <laughs> All right. All right, everybody. Well, that about does it for us. Again, I've been Greg Goodness. You can find me on Twitter, at Greg Goodness. This man right here. Uh, and I'm Zach Wilson. Thanks for geeking out with us, guys. You can follow me on Twitter at That's Zach Wilson. A bunch of shows here at AfterBuzz. Thank you for tuning in. From executive producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other After shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz you later. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.